And at this time, uh, Barbara has the drosh for us this week. So we'll hand it over to uh, Barbara. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Isn't it great to be with like believers this morning, to be in, our, be in his midst, to delight in the Shabbat? So my drosh this week is Shofatim, Shoftim, which means judges. So this parsha takes up matters concerned with the judiciary, the responsibilities devolving upon the Israelite king, his priests, and his prophets, and laws of warfare. In chapter 19, there's an introduction to the mitzvah as ha, ha, help me, Garrett, ha, ha, Hagagat. Hagagat Guvel, which means the prohibition against seizing land belonging to another. In this portion, judges are reminded not to take bribes, generals are told to pursue peace, and all are told in no uncertain terms to seek justice. So in this week's portion, we see four categories of leadership. And I'm going to let you know right now, there's a lot of scripture in it, but who's better word than his word to share? So there's a lot of scripture, so hold on, okay? So first of all, judges. In every town, they are to point judges who settle disputes among their own people. In Deuteronomy 17, 8 through 9, it says, Suppose a matter arise that is too hard for you to judge over bloodshed, legal claims, or assault, matters of controversy within your gates. Then you should go to the place Adonai your God chooses and come to the Levitical Kohanim and the judge in charge at that time. And you will inquire and they will tell you the sentence of judgment. So first we have judges. The second is kings. The Israelite people may ask for a king, but the king must be chosen by Adonai, not be given over to excessive wealth, women, or warfare. The king is to constantly study the Torah and, keep Israel's, and help Israel keep the law. In Deuteronomy 17, 15, we see, you will, indeed, you will indeed set over yourself a king whom Adonai, your God, chooses, one from among your brothers who will be appointed as king over you. You may not put a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Then we have the priests. The priests come from the tribe of Levi who work the tabernacle. Mo Moses reminds the people that all the Levites won't have land to call their own, and they must be sorted by, supported by the offerings of the rest of Israel. And then fourth, we have prophets. Moses finally talks about the role of prophets. A prophet speaks the words of Adonai given to him directly from him. If anything they say does not come to pass, they are not a prophet. And we see that in Deuteronomy 18.22. When a prophet speaks in Adonai's name and the word does not happen or come true, that is a word that Adonai has not spoken. So these leaders were, are primarily there to help the people keep Adonai's law. However, we know as we read in the rest of the Old Testament that judges fail, kings worship idol, priests forget the law, and prophets give unchallenged false reports. Without a doubt, Adonai knew his people would fail. And even today in our world, they still fail. I fail. All we have to do is watch the news and see all the corruption we have in our world and in the different leadership positions. Even today, you know, I am an inspector. I'm a children's inspector. I bring a part of authority. I have responsibilities in how I present and tell people that they're in compliance. I fail from day to day. I can tell you I failed this week, when I had to go into an allegation and I was being yelled at and I was being shouted out and they were telling me they were going to call the police, I really had to call on the Lord, Lord, help me, give me peace, give me grace to walk away from here right now because I'm doing no good. They later called and apologized, in, but it was a little scary in that moment. But there is one that never failed, and we can look to him as a model, Yeshua. Adonai knew we needed an example. Yeshua succeeds in all four categories previously mentioned. One, Yeshua, Yeshua is a perfect judge. He takes no bribe, shows no partiality, always maintains justice, and his decisions are always perfect. Romans 2, 5 through 11. But by your hand and unrepented heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath, when God's righteous judgment is revealed. He will pay back each person according to his deeds. To those who by perseverance in doing good are seeking glory, honor, and, more, and immortality, eternal life. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, wrath, and fury. They will, be, they 
will be trouble and hardship for every human soul that does evil, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But there will be glory, honor, and shalom to everyone who, who does good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. He is also the judge who justifies by taking penalty for, uh, for us on himself. Romans 3.26, through God's forbearance, he demonstrates his righteousness at the present time, that he himself is just and also that the justifier of the one who puts his trust in Yeshua. Yeshua is the perfect king. He not only knew the law perfectly, but he also fulfilled it perfectly. Matthew 5.17, do not think that I came to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. He did not just sit on the throne enforcing the law of his people. He left his throne to have the law's penalty enforced on himself. In Galatians 3.13, Messiah liberated us from the Torah's curse, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. Then like a good king, he leads us to follow his law as citizens in his kingdom. Yeshua is also the perfect priest, whereas Israel's... Whoops, I... Whoops, hold on a second. No, I'm right. Yeshua is also a perfect priest. Whereas Israel priests were, suppo were supported by the people, Yeshua provided his own sacrifice. Hebrews 10, 11 through 14. Indeed, every Kohen stands day by day, serving and offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But on the other hand, when this one offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right foot of God, waiting from them on until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering, he was perfected forever and ever and became holy. He offered up his very self to provide once and for all forgiveness for everyone who believes in him. And lastly, Yeshua is the perfect prophet that Moses said would come. He not only perfectly spoke Adonai's word to us, but he was Adonai's perfect word in human flesh. Hebrews 1.3, the sun is the radiance of his glory and the imprint of his being, upholding all things by his powerful word. When he made purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So this week, I pray that the Ruach HaKadosh would give you the eyes to see God to see the God who provides leaders and uphold justice and grace, and that you be praying for our leaders, that they model the one perfect one, Yeshua. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you.